Good morning, traders and investors, and happy Friday. It's Friday, April 14th. It's about 7.45 in the morning. I'm getting a little later start than usual, but in plenty of time for you to get in on the market action and see what exactly is cooking and shaking and baking this morning. Now, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Roger Scott, and I'm still the senior strategist for WealthPress. It's about 7.46 in the morning. If you're watching this on the YouTube channel, please like, subscribe, and post comments. I respond there. And if you're on the YouTube channel, the WealthPress YouTube channel, you can subscribe to our Telegram broadcasts, which uh, give you updates and give you some free goodies and post my videos there and pictures of my pets. It's all there for you. Anyhow, as you can see here, the market, the Nasdaq's weaker this morning by a, a good shot. The Dow's still a little strong. Blue chips are strong. You've got earnings on financial stocks today. You've got uh, Citibank. You've got uh, Chase. BlackRock, Wells Fargo, they're all coming out with earnings today, which means there's going to be a lot of ha algo hanky-panky going on in the financial sector. And I mean a lot of hanky-panky going on. The algos have been screaming all week. I mean, let me show you something interesting. This is really, really interesting. This is the bond market. The bond market's going down all week, all right, all week. This is higher interest rates. I don't know what, what they're talking about yesterday. The report took an edge off. Bonds were lower yesterday and they're lower today. That's higher rates. Meanwhile, you still have XLK going higher. Look at that. Now notice it's still in a range, but see this right here? This is a multi-day high. And what this tries to do, what they're trying to do right here is to get buy stops in right there. They're trying to get the, they're trying to sucker in the buyers right there. They're doing it very subtly, but see those stops? It's very interesting. Interest rates are going higher. Meanwhile, bond prices are going lower. And meanwhile, technology is going higher. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. So again, be very, very careful for algo traders who are taking the stops on these sectors like XLK or XLY, for example. Oops, wrong, wrong ticker symbol. XLY, for example and are making it look like we're breaking out, but but in fact, we're not breaking out. We're actually, we should be moving lower, not higher right now, because sentiment is moving towards higher rates, not lower rates. Right here, you see that? That's what I was meant, meaning to show you, communication and technology, right there. They take you out right there, and then they bring it lower. So I'm very, very cautious about the algos this week, and honestly, uh, the CPI cemented pretty much that the Fed is gonna raise rates 0.25, and the PPI didn't change that yesterday. Matter of fact, the bond market went lower on it yesterday. So, so the, and it looks like it's coming right down to the base. Remember, we sold it right around here. So, we, we and I, I warn people that it's bonds going down means interest rates going higher. If interest rates are going higher, that's directly bad for tech and communication stocks. Another major factor you need to be aware of. I want to show you something. This is... This is utility stocks making 50-day highs. I want you to see that right here. Look at where we're at. Let me show you a three-year chart in case you don't believe me. This is above the 50-day moving average. Do you think we have a lot more to go on utilities? Maybe a little, but I don't think so. Now look at utilities making 20-day highs. We're all the way up here. Now what usually happens after we come up here? We come right back down, right? Well, take a look at healthcare. This is healthcare above 50-day line. Look at where we're at. Just a hair there, right? Now look at the healthcare 20-day. We're really, really near the top. So what I'm foreseeing is algo traders trying to really shake us into these trades, uh, breaking up stops on these sectors such as healthcare and utilities, trying to get us to believe that the markets are going higher, where in fact, momentum levels are just overdone. So be very, very cautious with algos on utility stocks healthcare stocks and uh, financial stocks, especially the next couple of days because earnings on financial and they love to get in during earnings season and they love to capitulate those large cap stocks to the upside and the downside and then take them lower. So again, utilities and healthcare on the 50 day line and the 20 day line are really overbought right now. And I mean, you could see it, look at utilities, look at the 50 day utilities, look at where we're at. We're not down here, we're up here. Look at utilities on a 20-day line. Now look at healthcare on a 50-day line. This is a three-year chart. Look, three-year. Look at where we're at right now. Every time we come up here, we come down. We're almost there, but look at healthcare on the 20-day. We're at the highest level we've been in, in, let's see here, three years? 
we're at the highest momentum level that I can probably see right now. Look at that. So we got to be really, really cautious. And I'm telling you, as I sit here, the last time we were up here was when we bounced back from COVID. Look at how where we're at right now. So be really careful. The algos are totally manipulating utilities, healthcare, and the financial sector. And that may continue into next week, especially with earnings season. Now let's talk about the nitty gritty and what we can expect today from the economy, all right? But I wanted to get that out of my system and show all the algo folks, because it is Friday, and, and Friday I talk about algos, that there's huge, huge monkey business. That's right, monkey business going on with utilities, healthcare, and probably today financial stocks we'll have to we'll have to be uh, we'll have to watch it carefully because there's a chance the financials are oversold so we'll have to see it carefully so u.s benchmark indices rallied on thursday as economic data showed further cooling in inflationary pressure and signs of easing in the resilient labor market so we did have a cooling of inflation but easing of the resilience in the labor market should have offset it it didn't and the ppi was not good on tuesday and as i said the bond market is going down it's not going up which means interest rates are going higher so why are these tech stocks posting all these highs it makes no sense whatsoever uh, in thursday's trading session wall street main indexes ended in the green with the dow climbing to a two-month high and a tech heavy Nasdaq notched a one day gain in nearly biggest one day gain in nearly a month and shaped a three day losing streak. I'm telling you as I sit here right now, these stocks are overdone. The bond market is going uh, down, not up. On Thursday, data showed that U.S. producers' price index unexpectedly fell. Also, Labor Department showed that claims for state unemployment benefits rose to an adjusted 239,000. The average now is not a 200,000, it's a 239,000. That's higher than expected, 232,000, and that's revised. So we are seeing a loosening uh, labor market, and consumer prices are still going up, and bonds are going lower. So that means interest rates are going higher. So I don't understand exactly what's going on because this is completely counterintuitive. The market should cool off, not speed up right now, which leads me to believe these algos are pushing monkey business our way. Now look at this. Yesterday report did not, I repeat again, did not shift the odds of the Fed moving away from 0.25. They're still at 69.2. So I don't know what the hell the market is thinking right now. Today, we have JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, Citigroup, and UNH kicking off first quarter reports. Analysts expect aggregate earnings to fall 5.2% year over year compared to expected growth of 1.4% at the start of the quarter. So we were at 1.4% growth. Now we're at a 5.2% decline. I have no idea why this market is moving higher. All eyes are focused today on retail sales. That's coming out in about 37 minutes. Then you have industrial production, which is a biggie. But the, the big question is, what is Christopher Walker going to say? Consumer sentiment is not going to be a big deal because you had all the consumer data via CPI, PPI, and retail sales by that time. Import-export prices will be interesting, but retail sales and industrial production will give us a better sense of what's really going on in this market. You got consumer sentiment, as I mentioned. In addition, we're going to hear from Christopher Walker. He's the Federal Reserve Governor. I can't hear, wait to hear what he has to say. In Europe, uh, we're up a little bit this morning as cooler than expected wholesale inflation reading bolstered bets that the Federal Reserve and other central banks could soon reach a peak in their rate hiking cycle. Soon is a very loose word, especially when bonds are going down and interest rates are going up. China, China finally closed higher, led by gains in semiconductor and resource stocks. Also, People's Bank of, of China said Friday that the country would achieve this year's growth target, boosting investor sentiment. Very interesting. Nikkei is just going crazy after Warren Buffett said he's going to be investing in the country. They're up sixth straight session, longest winning streak since July, uh, boosted by a strong rally in Wall Street overnight and more than an 8% jump in one of their stocks. Now today, Boeing, one of the stocks that we currently have, it's down 4% pre-market, but not because of earnings. Now, I messed up on Progressive Health. I totally missed their earnings. My fault, fault Mia Copa. But here it wasn't uh, my fault. It was actually a news announcement that their deliveries of their 737 MAX models might be delayed due to issues with parts supplies by Spirit Aero Systems. Also, Tesla dropped pre-market after the car maker cut prices on its Model 3 and Y vehicles in Singapore between 4.3 and 5% and lowered the price in Germany by 4.5%. That's substantial. Honestly, I think their cars are just outdated at this point. 
Again, United Health, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, BlackRock. BlackRock is a big institutional one. And Citibank are all reporting today. Now, I think some are reporting before the open. Some are reporting after the, uh, after the close. But keep your eye on the financial stocks, especially in light of the bond market moving lower. This is higher rates. This is bearish for the market. We've had one, two, three, four, five bearish days for the market, and the market's making new swing highs. And healthcare and utilities are rocking and rolling like there's no stop. I am telling you right now, there's a lot of algorithmic traders right now trying to manipulate the market, and uh, it's not working with Uncle Roger. Um, I think the the stock market, the S&P, I think it's going to remain in this channel. I think it's going to cool off a little bit, but I think it may come up a little higher and then come, start coming off because we're getting to the overbought levels and a lot of sectors are ready to come down. Looking at the QQQ, looking at the QQQ, I don't see a lot more upside, especially with interest rates. And we've been declining the last Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six days. We've been just very choppy. I think that we need a catalyst for earnings, and I'm just not seeing it right now. And also, tech stocks aren't reporting for quite some time. So be very, very cautious with the trading action today because we may flip on a dime. Now, seasonally, financials are very strong today. But again, we have earnings, and I want to see how these banks are doing. Let's see, Wells Fargo. Let's see how they're doing pre opening. Uh, up 3%, or actually, yeah, 3%, Bank of America, uh, Bank of America, let's see here. Yep, up 3%. Uh, let's see how uh, JP Morgan is doing. Yeah, so far they're doing really good. Seasonally, look at that, up 5%. And BlackRock, they're doing really, really good. Up 0.21, yeah. Let's look at XLF, see how it's doing right now. Yeah, it's up about 1.5%. Be careful with this gap. And also, speaking of gaps, meaning of gaps, there was a little gap here in the bond market right here that I think once we break lower right here, we're going to break this. We still haven't filled this gap. So I'm seeing bonds going lower, and I'm seeing stocks like SMH, like semiconductor stocks. Whoops. See how it's been going lower, not higher? I think this is going to break down. So again, sentiment is not really getting much better in a lot of the um, a lot of the technology sectors. It may appear it has, but it hasn't. Now, if you look at stock fetcher, you will still see, if you look at my filters, you will see the communication service and technology are still leading. But if you look at it over a month, you will still see that they're leading, but, but, Notice healthcare is knocking on its back door. Utilities are knocking on its back door. Consumer staples. I'm telling you right now as, as I sit here, it's just a matter of time till these things cool off and energy material, consumer discretionary, the other sectors begin to take lead. So I wouldn't be, I'd be very, very cautious. Now there are exceptions to the rule, like Nvidia has been going crazy, but for the most part, be really, really careful with communication technology, utilities and healthcare and watch financials right now because there's a lot of monkey business on the table with algos, especially towards the end of the week when there's less volume where it's easier for them to manipulate the market. I just don't see why the market rallied so hard yesterday, especially tech with interest rates directly going higher. I think investors were too uh, exuberant. <laughs> I love that word exuberant about the uh, PPI, but folks, it's not just the PPI, it's everything together and the CPI and the PPI did not change the odds of the Fed raising. So I don't know why this rally in the, in the market happened, especially with the bond market going down one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five days in a row. Now, before I let you go for the weekend, and yes, I want everyone to have a great weekend. Folks, we've uncovered a pricing mismatch in the option market that'll shock you. Yes, it'll shock you. Thanks to this mismatch, even a tiny little weeny 1% move in the stock could lead to gains as high as 31, 41, even 46% in a matter of days. Now, I just held a special presentation to show this pricing mismatch in action and how to apply it to option trades. So if you love this, if, if you love a good idea, and I know you do, then there's something you don't want to miss. Follow the link below. Check it out now. If you're in the YouTube Wealth Press channel, that's where we post these videos. YouTube Wealth Press channel. There's a link below the channel, and there's also a Telegram link. Subscribe, like us, in, in, interact with us. I'm always available. I actually give my email number out to my clients. 
please, please, please reach out to me, support at marketgeeks.com, post comments, feedback, want to hear from you, and have a great weekend. Bye.